I'm going to probably break something here, so hang on. A lot of that's already happened. Are you touching it? No, I'm not touching it. Okay. All right. Now, um, there, was a, there was a logistics slide here. Did you want to talk to, to this one as well? Oh, let me quickly do these. <laughs> Thanks for the sponsors, Surety Hosting, and Hanno, the guys who rock. Uh, the roof was... And so, thank you. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, so hi guys. I'm I'm really uh, excited to be back here. Uh, the topic today is something, as Edward mentioned, that we mentioned last year. If you were here at the the talk last year, so Agile lessons from Silicon Valley. I mentioned Agile Flight Crews a little bit in passing. Uh, the purpose of this talk is to actually deep dive through that and uh, explore exactly how we apply that um, and the advantages that we're looking to get out of it. So. <clears throat> um, this is a blurb about me. If you really want to know, uh, watch the video from last year because that's what I talked about, uh, my journey. Um, I am the Agile Transformation Leader for Intuit. Uh, 8,000 people, hundreds of Agile teams scattered around the globe. Uh, I also serve as a Chief Agilist for FireAnt, uh, hence this, this brand here. Um, and this is really just a, a consultancy that sort of helps organizations uh, apply lessons from, from the industry, from actual practitioners. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I'm going to start with asking you, are you in the right room? <clears throat> so you're, you may be in the right room if you, if you resonate with any of these comments, right? Our, our team is struggling to deliver in a predictable fashion, right? Our business is frustrated uh, that we can never deliver as we promise. Uh, our team has defect escapes, and they're out of control, and we don't know what to do and, and how to deal with that. Uh, there's an us versus them feeling in our team. Right? Dev versus QA, or design versus the team, or us versus the product owner. Um, our team operates as a group of individuals rather than an actual team. Right? We are team in name only, perhaps, is another way to think of that. Uh, our team would describe Agile as a lot of overhead, too many meetings, too heavy, it's such a big process. Uh, and our team is doing Agile, um, but really we want to move beyond that. We want to move into the sort of being of Agile. So now is your chance to leave. If you were only here, if you were only here for the exciting AGM part, uh, now is your time to escape the room, and you can use this as an excuse. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, our friend, the, the Agile principles, because uh, a lot of what we certainly uh, drive it into it is our pr our program is based around embracing the Agile principles, adopting the Agile principles. It's not any particular flavor of Agile like Scrum or Kanban or anything. It's really about resonating with these. So I thought I'd highlight for you the Agile principles that we're going to be focusing on today. All right. So we're going to talk about um, you know working together. We're going to talk about this concept of face-to-face -face conversation and the, and the importance of it. Um, we're going to talk about you know this idea of sustainable, predictable development, and we're going to talk about uh, self-organizing teams um, and how we can uh, apply this uh, at, at a few different altitudes. Okay. So first of all, you know, let's you know, thinking about these these agile principles. Um, imagine we have these agile principles. Uh, that's good, right? We can rally around those, and we can sort of get towards uh, the agile principles. Those principles are supported by a ton of agile practices, stand ups and and uh, burn up charts and burn down charts and sprint planning and da -da -da. all of these are agile practices and and, and support those principles. Um, but that's not really what we care about. Well, you know, when, when my phone rings in, in Mountain View um, and it's a leader within the company and they say, hey, come make my team more agile, uh, my response to them is, sure, but rephrase that question without using the word agile. Because that's not really what they want. Yes, we can make them more agile, better practices and, and better at the principles, but what they really want is some sort of outcome, right? And it's usually a business outcome. And so these are the sort of uh, known business outcomes of, of Agile. Um, we're going to have happier people. Our quality will improve. We will be more predictable. We are going to get there faster. And as a result of all that stuff, our customers will be happier, right? The ultimate um, outcome that we want. Um, and those are not necessarily just Agile outcomes. These are business outcomes now. 
and the business outcomes are in support of whatever your corporate vision, goals, strategy is for your employees and customers and shareholders, and each business has that sort of laid out. All right? So uh, today, we are going to talk about these, but we're going to talk about some practices like Agile Flight Crews, but really it's in support of some of these outcomes that we're, we're aiming to deliver. I always say that uh, Agile is not there to, to serve itself. We are not there to serve Agile. Agile is there to serve us, and uh, this is Agile serving us. Right? Okay, so before we start today, um, I want to introduce you to these five filters that I want you to sort of think about as we apply uh, the slides today. This is uh, some slides that come from our Silicon Valley Agile class, um, but I pulled them out so you can uh, share them here as well. So five filters. First filter is Agile is a team sport, right? Now, you look at this and go, oh, these are a team, but this is not a team. This is a bunch of individuals sprinting to cross the line first. Instead of that, I'd like you to think of this picture, right? Where we are working diligently to deliver, um, getting there in a happy, sustainable way. Look how happy they are, They're smiling and everything. Um, that's awesome, right? So Agile is a team sport. We are trying to operate as a team, not a bunch of individuals sprinting to the line. Um, second filter is focus on the customer. Yes, we are going to build this awesome Ferrari slash uh, VW Golf probably, right? Um, and yes, it's going to be amazing and it's going to have fuel injection computers and, and tires and all this sort of stuff eventually, right? Um, but instead of that, what if we thought of this? What if we thought about solving an immediate customer problem and focusing on the customer and the customer benefit and delivering that? So that first sprint, we deliver the, the unicycle. The next sprint, we deliver the second wheel. The next sprint, we deliver the engine. The next sprint, we deliver the roof and so on and so forth. Eventually, we'll still arrive at the same awesome you know, Ferrari, but the way that we deliver it is through focusing on the customer first. All right? Um, the next three, the, the last three uh, filters I want you to think about are about minimum, right? Do the minimum responsible amount of work. You, you, you may look at this and laugh and it's like, this is my neighborhood in <laughs> at Christmas time, right? Um, instead of this, we want to, to think in terms of, like, do I really need to do all this or, or do I only need to, to clear the bar? Do the minimum responsible amount of work. Now, before you walk out of this room and go say, you know, tell your boss, say, Ian said do the minimum amount of work. Eh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying do the minimum responsible amount of work, right? If we don't need to do all this extra work right now uh, or at all, then don't do it, right? Just focus on the minimum responsible. Um, and then the next one is do it uh, at the last responsible moment. I don't know if you've ever seen these people who camp out in front of the store to get the latest iPhone or whatever, and they're there for weeks in advance. Um, yeah, yeah, you could do that, but why would you do all this stuff up front if you could just do it right now at the last responsible moment, right? So minimum responsible amount of work, last responsible moment, um, and use the minimum responsible number of people. So imagine this as, you know, we're getting a, we're delivering a story here, um, but instead of that, what if we were focused on this uh, this idea of the pit crew, right? We only need these three people to execute this thing right now. Why do I have seven people sitting in a meeting, right, talking about this thing that three people are going to do, all right? And this is the, the heart of what we're going to talk about today. All right, so those are the five filters. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk about this idea of an agile flight, an agile flight crew. And essentially, uh, that, that agile flight is like a user story. And the flight is going to transition uh, across the storyboard um, and on its journey, and we'll show you that in a little bit. But imagine that, uh, and this is a picture of all the flights in the air over the US on a Sunday, right? Middle of the day Sunday, so a relatively light load. But imagine in your organization all the stories that are trying to transition across the board. Um, and we are honing in on this concept of the flight because we want highly predictable, consistent outcomes of our stories, um, you know, high quality, uh, same things that we like, characteristics of a commercial air flight. But today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to hone in on one of these flights, right? This is ASA-764 flying over Sioux Falls, and uh, I think that's like a Alaskan Airlines, maybe. Um, but we're going to talk about its journey, and, and the journey of hence all the other stories that are on the, on the map here. 
Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the flight crew itself. Now, when we talk about a, a flight crew, and there are many different kinds of flight crews, right? Some flight crews are many, some flight crews are few, uh, and they have different needs, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly, our stories are large, they're small, they involve testing and design, they may involve operations and, and, and whatever. Um, and so, uh, lots of different ways of assembling a flight crew in different types. But what we are talking about specifically is the team members of an Agile team, of a Scrum team, uh, that are responsible for this story only, all right? Not the entire Scrum team. So we're talking about sort of taking uh, the team concept down a layer, if you like, right? So this is the sub-team, the flight crew of this story. Um, or the other way to look at it is we're taking it up a layer from the individual, right? We're no longer a team of individuals trying to deliver my task, this is my responsibility, we are talking about our responsibility and the responsibility of this flight crew for this story only, okay? So let's start and introduce the members of this flight crew. This is the pilot, all right? The flight crew has a pilot, the person who is um, ultimately uh, sort of responsible and in charge of, of, of this flight. Um, the key thing here is that the flights are self-selected. When those stories are sitting in the backlog, any member of the scrum team can put their hand up and go, yep, I'll be the pilot of the next one, right? I will become the, the guiding uh, hand of this next story. I am therefore the pilot, right? Whether you are a designer, a developer, a, a tester, doesn't matter. Anybody can do that, okay? Next thing is that they are ultimately the, the person who's responsible for the safety and guidance of this thing, right? So they're going to... Uh, sort of help facilitate this across the board. Um, they're going to be the one who is going to be uh, sort of the, the go-to person in some cases of, of the status of the flight. Um, but the other thing to remember, uh, sorry, is that, that they are there for the safe delivery. But it's not just them, right? We'll get to the rest of the flight crew. Um, the other thing is that they are going to be working on this flight, right? It's not just like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll be the pilot and I'll or what you guys do it, right? They have some tasks to do. So uh, don't assign the pilot and say, or, and then get a bunch of other people to actually do the work, right? They're a member of the crew. They have tasks to execute. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, there are other members of the flight crew. And, the, and as I mentioned before, they can be very varied, right? In, in terms of who else you need for a safe delivery of a mission or a safe delivery of a story across the board. Um, some of the characteristics that you're looking for there is uh, they, they are going to um, uh, have specific um, contributions. They're going to be able to execute uh, certain tasks here. Um, and they are in it together, right? This is a really important point that when I'm done with my, when I'm done with my task, it doesn't mean that I'm off the hook, right? I can wash my hand of it. I'm on a crew. And we don't get there until the whole plane gets there. We're on that plane together. So we are uh, accountable for it. And we will help each other uh, wherever we can. Um, and they have specific tasks to do, right? So again, we're not going to put people on the, on the flight crew unless they have tasks to do. And those tasks are going to be divided uh, into those necessary roles. So this might be your developer, your tester, your designer, right? You can still assign the specific unique uh, tasks, but they're in this, all these things are tied together. All right, well, we'll demonstrate this in a little, a little bit. Um, in order to deliver a flight, you need this person called the air traffic controller. In our world, that's the product owner, typically, right? But it's the person who is really going to be the one who uh, is going to prioritize the flights, right? The, who's in charge of prioritizing the backlog? Um, who's in charge of signing off this story and saying this story is complete? Right, this is the, the flight uh, air traffic controller um, and typically the product owner in an agile context. Um, and there's going to be a lot of conversations with this person throughout the flight. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. But a lot of communication uh, with whoever's going to uh, be, be signing off the story, helping us understand what the, the customer actually wants. Okay? Okay, so we've got a flight crew members, we've got a pilot, we've got an air traffic controller. Let's talk about the life cycle of this thing. So 
imagine that this is our story, and it starts over here. This is the, the story here represented as an aircraft. Um, initially, we are going to create that flight at some point. We're going to create this story. Now, that story may be written in you know, a release planning, a sprint planning. Uh, it may be even written in an emergency, right? We need this thing right now. And it's the middle of the sprint, doesn't matter. Quick, write it. But at some point, it's written. It is created. And this is what we'd, we would call uh, flight planning. And then it's placed into the backlog in a priority order, maybe at the top, maybe somewhere else. Um, eventually, that story is going to be preparing to take off. And that's what we call the story huddle. All right? And this is a really distinct difference between uh, non-flight crew teams and flight crew teams in that uh, only the necessarily people are gathering for the story huddle, and we'll show you what that looks like. Um, then the story is going to get executed. They're going to work on the task. They're going to get all the jobs done. Um, eventually, the story is going to come into land, and then you know you're going to do some sort of post-flight review and analysis and retrospective potentially on these stories. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through some of these things. Now, don't forget we are talking about transitioning across the storyboard here, and we talk about stories transitioning across the storyboard. And the reason we talk about that and not tasks transitioning is because the stories represent the value. You know, as a customer, I need this thing so that I can, right, is that sort of traditional way to describe a story. But whether you write it like that or not, you are identifying a customer as a user. I need this thing, right? You are identifying a feature that you're going to deliver. I need this thing. And you are identifying a value or a customer benefit so that I can, right? That is the unit of value, and that's what we care about delivering. Not that the database was created, that the HTML page was written, doesn't matter, right? When the story is done, the value is delivered. And so we are really focused on delivering these stories to done. Now, to deliver a story, I might need a whole crew, and that crew needs to work together. But you, you notice what we don't have here is a column that says, you know, in testing or, you know, in code review or in this, right? Uh, because it, it doesn't matter. It's not done. Okay. So, flight planning, story creation. So, first of all, uh, we're going to write this story, this invest story. Everybody familiar with invest? If you're not, I'm going to show you on the next slide, so don't, don't worry. Um, uh, but this is a high-quality story that meets certain criteria that we're looking for. Um, we're going to size that story. It's a large, or it's a small, or it's a medium, it's a one-point, a three-point, a five-point, whatever. Um, and we are going to uh, place it into the backlog in an appropriate place. Right? So it's going to get prioritized as a result of the, uh, of the business value, and the size, and risks, and compliance, and all these other factors. Um, but at some point, it is placed into the backlog. Here we are in story creation. Now, invest, if you, just a quick reminder, means uh, independent. So independent means that the story can transition to the done column by itself. Not that it doesn't have dependencies or anything like that, but what I don't want to see is a story that's moved into in progress, and then I can't move it to the done column unless I move these three other stories into in progress, and then they all go to done together. If that's the case, I'm kidding myself that I have four small stories. I actually have one extra large story. Right? And, and I've broken it up in some funny way to try and check an agile box somewhere. And we don't want that. Right? So it can transition all the way by itself. It's negotiable. Right? When we open up these stories and we look at them, if, if I open up a story in Jira or Rally or whatever your tool is, um, and it's got 400 pages of documentation in the story, uh, it probably isn't negotiable. Right? The story is that placeholder for the conversation. It goes back to our minimum responsible amount of work. Right? We don't need to do all that work up front uh, when we write the story. We just need enough detail so that we can size the story, that we understand the implications of it. Just enough. Placeholder for conversation. And we'll explain why that's, uh, that's important later. All right. It's valuable. Right? When we open up the story and we look for that as a, I need so that I can, um, or it has a business value estimate. Some teams like to have business value estimates. But I'm looking for that so that I can part. Right, that it, it's articulating value, and it's articulating value for somebody in particular. Right? It has an estimate, right? And if, if, if the estimate is unknown, or my favorite is extra, extra large, or 100 points, or you know, whatever your, your biggest number is, um, chances are that you 
uh, you may not have enough detail or you may need to break this thing down um, or roll the dice and take your chances, right? It could take anywhere from a day to two years, um, but that might not be good enough for our, our predictability. Um, as a result, we tend to want to see these things being small, right? The smaller stories, and there's, you know, there's a, a magic number there. I don't know what it is for your organization, but I like to say sort of two to four days is a nice sweet spot for some of our teams uh, that the, the stories can, you know, drip across the board constantly and delivering value. When they do that, there's less chance that they're going to get stuck or there's less chance that the team's going to get distracted on something else uh, while the story is in flight. Uh, they're testable. If they don't have acceptance criteria or high-level acceptance tests, um, so you know, acceptance criteria being something like user can see a list of names, right? That's a high-level acceptance criteria. Uh, acceptance test might be the given when then format, given this user comes to the main page, when they click the about the team page, then they see a list of names, something like that, right? So we wanna see at least one of those, and by the time that story takes off, there will be more, right? There'll be enough, but minimum responsible. I don't need 100 acceptance tests when I write the story. I need enough so that I can choose a size, right? And at this point, it's just a guess size, right? T-shirt size, small, medium, or 135 points, or whatever it is, okay? So just enough. Okay, so assuming I've got this awesome invest story, um, eventually this story will make its way uh, through the queue uh, to the top of the backlog ready for takeoff, right? It's next for takeoff, if you like. Um, and I, I remember, <laughs> this gives me bad flashbacks. I was in, uh, in New York once coming back to California we were number 53 for takeoff. Like, it was horrible. We were there for like three hours or something, sitting on the runway. You think bumper to bumper traffic is bad on the motorway. Imagine what it's like in a, in a plane. Anyway, I digress. So uh, these stories are sitting in a prioritized backlog. Now, eventually, that story is going to make its way uh, to the point where it can take off. But before it does, we are going to do a story huddle. Now, many of you may be doing um, sprint planning. Anybody doing sprint planning here? Anybody? Anybody? A few of you? All right. And, and sprint planning, you might, I don't know if you are, but you might gather this team of, of the scrum team of eight people, and you're going to look at all the stories that you have, and you're going to start reviewing them all. Um, and this is different than that, right? In our teams, what we do is the sprint planning meeting takes 15 minutes or less, right? They just get a rough commitment. Yep, okay, looks good. Let's go. And then uh, the actual deep dive into the stories doesn't happen until the story huddle. And it's only at the point that the story is ready to take off. So it might happen halfway through the sprint, might happen you know, on the first day of the sprint. Okay, so first thing that's gonna happen is the pilot who has put up his or her hand and said, yes, uh, this story is mine. Uh, before they put up their hand, let me go back here. Okay. Too many and before they put up their hand and grab another story, we want them to first look at this in progress column. And we want them to say, hey, I'm on this wider scrum team that's comprised of multiple flight crews executing these stories, but this is in priority order, right? These things are the lowest priority um, after these things, and these things were higher priorities than these things, right? So what I want them to do is to say, okay, before I go and grab this lowest priority thing, can I help this flight crew deliver this story to done, deliver this value to done. Nope, uh, and, and you know, we go around and ask them, can, you, can I help, nope, can I help, nope, can I help, get out of my office, whatever, right? But, but at some point you go to the end of that list, you're like okay, nobody needs my help, we're all good, I'm gonna go and get, I'm gonna be the pilot for this next story, okay? I'm gonna zip through this again, <laughs> I'll repeat that. Um, so I'm the pilot now, I'm going to assemble a flight crew. Now I'm gonna need uh, maybe I'm the developer, so maybe I need a tester, maybe I need a designer. Um, I certainly need the product owner or the, the whoever the air traffic controller is, whoever's going to sign off this story, um, and I'm going to arrange a meeting. Now, these people, maybe they're all you know, available as well, maybe they aren't, maybe they're on other flight crews um, working on other stories. So you have to decide, is this the right time to, to have the story huddle? Um, and it's okay to have a story huddle where they're still wrapping up another story, so you're gonna, you find the right balance there. 
Um, but you know, you can find teams where these flight crews kind of roll from story to story together. So um, whatever works. Um, they have a meeting. They go through the story that was written maybe two months ago, maybe yesterday, maybe five minutes ago. And what they're going to do is they're going to maybe ask some more questions. They're going to validate any risks and assumptions that were originally captured in the story. Um, they are going to write additional acceptance tests at this point. It might be appropriate. Um, and they are going to task out the story. Right? So they're going, to, they're going to start to decompose the story into a set of tasks. Here are some tasks for the developer. Here are the tasks for the testing. Here are the tasks for the designer. Here are whatever. So they're going to start to decompose that into a series of tasks. Now, um, uh, there are certain tools which allow you to start to then track those tasks on the storyboard, right? But it's a storyboard, not a task board, right? Although some people may call it a task board. Um, the, the point here is that we actually just think of these things as a list of bullet point items inside the story, not as individual components. Right? So we just want to keep the focus on the value, which is at the story altitude, not the task altitude. OK, now, um, oh, that's the tasks. <laughs> They're making a big list of tasks here. Right? Now, uh, one, one other thing to take away from this is, as you go through that, as the, as the story flight crew, just the three people that I need for this story having the meeting, a couple of things to consider. One is, everybody's welcome. Right? The, 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 the three people were typically announced to the scrum team, hey, we're going to have a story huddle. Everybody's welcome to join, but nobody is required to join. Right? So if they don't need to be in this meeting, if they're not interested, it's not relevant to them right now, um, then fine. You have them do what we pay them to do, which is to deliver value on some other story. Right? It's a minimum responsible number of people uh, just for this story. Now, as they decompose into the tasks, they may uncover something like a risk or an assumption that